take your Bible and turn to Psalm 46. Psalm 46 this morning. This morning, we'll be preaching on studying through Psalm 46. The title this morning, Our Refuge and Strength. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Seal. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. It is our request that every time we open your word, Lord, that the things of this life will be put aside, that we will be strengthened and refreshed from your word. As we've spoken already, the prayer list is long this morning. And Lord, as this life goes on, I imagine the list will get longer and longer until we are finally home with you. We praise you, Lord, in the fact that we can pray to you, and you are God who hears prayers and answers them. Lord, remind us this morning that you and you alone are our refuge and our strength. I thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the freedom to gather in this building this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It seems that this last week has really, just every week, it's a new corner being turned. More chaos, more problems, chaos in the street, chaos in the capital. All week long, I've heard about the unrest in the nation. Everybody has a new perspective. Everybody has a new answer. How we're going to find hope. How we're going to stay straight. How we're going to survive the chaos that's being presented to us in this nation. And many of us can say, I know myself can say, that this is the first time that I've ever seen anything like this in my life. And while we say such a thing that this is the first time that we've ever seen anything like it, we also step back and acknowledge this is not God's first time seeing things like this. This is not God's first time where his children's freedoms have been threatened. This is not the first time where God's children were worried of what the outcome will be if things go a specific way in their nation. While freedom may be uncertain, and while all these other things may be uncertain in our nation, here in Psalms 46, our attention is drawn to a something very specific. And that is in the very first verse. And that is that God is our refuge and strength. As we leave verse 1, the rest of the text will not make sense unless we fully grasp what happens in verse 1. Psalms 46, believed to be written by King Hezekiah while he was under siege by the Assyrian king Sennacherib. Recorded, we can read of later, in 2 Kings 18. I don't know if your Bible is this way, but above the text, above the verses, 
I have a header there. It says, to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, upon a, a, a song upon Alamoth. To the chief musician. Now, listen. To the chief musician meant this. This is a song that you can sing in the temple. This is a song that you can play in the temple. This is a song that you can sing in the street. This is a song that you can sing in your home. This is a song to be lifted up. This is for others to hear. Hear me. This is what we need to get as we move forward in Psalms 46. Death was at their door. They was encompassed by to, by King Sennacherib, 185,000 people was around them. Listen, when we're facing trouble, when we're facing problems, when we're facing the struggles of this life, when we feel like we're totally encompassed, let's not forget that in the midst of everything that King Hezekiah was going through, God was preparing to give him a song to be sung. In the trials of this life, in the troubles that everything's going on, we may be overburdened with situations, but never take for granted that God may be preparing to give us a song. We may come out on the other side saying, God, you are our refuge and strength. God, look at all of the things that you've done in our life. All the things that we've experienced, the miracles that we've seen, is because of your mighty hand. The times, the times described in this song, in verse 2 and verse 3, is beyond our grasp. He is describing the worst times a world could ever, ever experience. We can't even contemplate and fully grasp what it means to experience such a situation. But before we even read these words, let's take in that Hezekiah says, what I have written down is something to sing in the temple. Also, what I have written down is something worth writing down. Listen, I always try to make a note of my own personal life. If God unveils something to me in his word, if God does something in my life, I try to make it a point to take a note down in the verse. It is a pack practice that I try to keep. That way I can continually remember the things that God has shown me. So I can continue to remember the things that God has unveiled to me through my Christian life. I can remember not too long back as I was reading through Romans. I was reading Romans in 1 and verse 20 where we see that the invisible things are made visible through creation about the Godhead. And I remember as we turned through that little round top and I came around the hill and for the first time in my life I took in this huge view of God's creation and I thought to myself, how could one person ever deny the existence of God? It was such a moving experience in my own life, though I could not think of all I did. The first thing as soon as I got back home is I got my Bible and pinned down the day that God made this verse clear to me. Because there are going to be things in our Christian life when God works, it's worth pinning down, and you should not <clears throat> want to forget it. And you say, why write it down? You know what? You may never know that all those years later, maybe your children will write it down. Maybe your children will in their life. Hezekiah wrote this down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What can a man say that goes to bed with 185,000 Assyrian soldiers standing at his door? What, is, what can a man say that has been encompassed by all of these enemies who want to take their life? But when he wakes up the next morning, he finds 185,000 dead soldiers in a field. What happened is, in the time of battle, God's people found, found themselves where God wanted them, running to the refuge. This is the only place we will find victory in this life. It was said that Hezekiah took the letter down to the temple and he laid it out before the Lord. And he, he laid his problems out before the Lord. He laid the troubles out before the Lord. He laid the woes out. I think that we would all be truly amazed in our Christian life. How mighty God would work in our life. How the word.
working hand of God, we would be amazed by it if we would just pray to God. If we would just trust him that he is who he says he is. But the problem is we get so overwhelmed by the 185,000 outside the door. We get so overwhelmed by the situation that our petitions never make it to the throne room of God. We never lay the letter down before the throne and say, God help me. We get so consumed about what obstacle is in front of us. And Hezekiah himself will go through the same thing. So overwhelmed by what's going on, he has forgotten to lay it before the Lord. See, this is a problematic approach with things. When we get so overwhelmed, we forget the proper way to handle these things in this life. The approach determines the outcome. And I'm not saying the approach will determine the outcome in the situation, but it will determine how you come out of the situation. What your spiritual standing will be. What your mind will be. Remembering what that prayer changes us. Mm -hmm. Here the author makes it clear in verse 1. It does not matter if the problem is politics. It doesn't matter if the problem is personal. We, we live in a nation where problems are mounting every day. We hear it all the time. All the woes. My job is no longer essential. I'm stuck here because I cannot travel. My, my hair is not essential, but their hair cut is. All the woes of the people saying this is unfair, and that is unfair. The psalmist pins Psalms 46 down to help us to focus. Wherever you are struggling, whenever you are struggling, there is a place that you can run to as a refuge. The psalmist here says, God is our refuge. Notice that he doesn't start off in saying the defense of against this great army of Sennacherib, this 185,000. He didn't say what kept us safe was the thick walls that surrounded around Jerusalem. He didn't say that it was the army of Israel that protected us. He didn't say that it was the mighty chariots. He never looked at himself when he said that we were safe. He said he found himself safe because God was the refuge. It was not the mighty walls. It was not the food supply. The only thing that was worth boasting about in Psalms 46 is what God has done. Listen, if we would just step back and say in our own personal life, it's not the house that's worth boasting about. It's not the things that we've maintained and acquired in this life that's kept us along the way. The reason we are where we are today is because God is who he says he is. Amen. He is our refuge and our strength. We may be facing the giants of this life, the battle of this life, but I'm not counting on an army. I'm not counting on stocks. I'm not counting on retirement to weather the storms of this life. To, I want to come out of the storms of this life telling God's people, hey, write this down, because when we get to the other side of this, I want to be able to remind people, 20 years down the road, we've been through a situation just like this before, and God delivered us then, and he's going to deliver us again. He was my refuge then, and he's going to be my refuge now. He was the source of my strength then, and he'll be the source of my strength yeah. now. We don't need to arrive at new situations trying to come up with new ways. The same God who kept us will continue to keep us. The same God who's provided will continue to provide. He provided for them. He protected them. I don't need the walls of a fenced city. I have Jehovah, and Jehovah has me. <coughs> there is a place you can go and find refuge. During World War II, it was said that around 1938, 900 Jews sailed um, for America, fleeing Germany. When they had arrived at the shores, their arrival had been denied. They were looking for a place of refuge, but was unable to find it. They were looking for a place of safety, but was unable to carry it. The ship that they had arrived on was sent back to Europe. It was noted in this article that at the end of the war, only 366 of the original 900 had survived. Where they had heard there was refuge, they could not find it. Where they heard was safety, they did not receive it. What they wanted to experience, they would not get it. They would be sent back. 
But with this text here, for God's people, you must never worry about being sent away. You must never worry about finding safety. You must never worry about finding refuge. The text says, God is our refuge and strength. For those who are his children, we will never be worried about sent away. Because what we have in him, we will always have. You will not be denied. His call to his children is come and find refuge with me. Come and find strength with me. Now, this refuge, this refuge does not mean guaranteed for the deliverance of my problem. But it does tell me that for us who are believers, what we can find is strength in the refuge who is God. There may be some under my voice today who are in need of a refuge. There may be some under my voice today who are in need of strength. And I say that there is only one answer today. There is only one place to find refuge from the woes of this life. There is only one place to find continual strength from the woes of this life. And you will not find it in the world. And the reason I know you not find it in the world is for many years I was the same way. I was like the woman at the well in John 4, continuing to go back to the well to try to find my thirst satisfied. But you know what? I return every day to the woes of this life, trying to find satisfaction until the day I met Jesus. Amen. And I've been satisfied ever since. My sins have been washed away. I have now remain pure in front of him. Doesn't Amen. mean I don't fall. It doesn't mean I don't stumble. It doesn't mean I don't have mistakes. But what it means is that my hope is not in this world. I realize that what I have in this world is the afflictions of this world. But I also realize it doesn't end here for those who repent of their sins and place their faith in Jesus Christ. There is a place called heaven waiting for me. Amen. While some may be fleeing a situation like those refugees by getting on a ship and sailing away, some may be fleeing their own current situation trying to find a way to have peace. Trying to find a way to be satisfied. Such chaos of their mind. Don't know what to do. Recognizing something is missing. Recognizing that they need hope. Recognizing that they need help. Continually searching the world and unable to find it. The text offers you something. God is the refuge and strength. He alone can fix the problem. The proposition that rests before us today is that of God. He can fix the problems, and not only can he do that, but he can fix us in the problems. You may say, I have never fully relied. I have never fully trusted. I have never been there. Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The psalmist said, Psalm 34, 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. See, oftentimes we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We repent of our sins. We trust him. We put our faith in him. And this is how we move forward in our Christian life. But we fail day after day as problems occur to continue to trust in him. We miss out on what it means to have the blessed life. We miss out what it means to have peace. What it means to have calm. What it means to not be worried because we realize in who our trust is. We realize that our faith is anchored in God, Amen. who is our refuge and our strength. Amen. Listen, when Hezekiah responded to Sennacherib the first time, that leader of the Assyrian army, he did not consult with the Lord. Right. Instead, you know what he did? He tried to buy them off. You know what Hezekiah's reward for that was? Only wasted time. Only wasted time worrying after he paid the ransom to Sennacherib, you know what happened? Nothing changed. Sennacherib still wanted to sack the city. He still wanted to overcome it. He still wanted to destroy it. The enemy did not change. He still wanted to press for victory over God's people. The truth told this morning, we know that God is our refuge and strength. And we must never be willing to pay the ransom of the enemy. We must never be willing to pay the enemy's ransom. We have a refuge. We don't have to break. We don't have to give. We don't have to worry. We have one to anchor to. But what about the timing of this refuge? What about this timing that uh, Hezekiah would experience? Hezekiah says, 
this psalmist says, his timing is impeccable. Because he does not show up two weeks later after a problem. He doesn't show up a month later. You don't find out a year later. The refuge that we have, according to verse 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He is very present. It's a very personal. He's very powerful. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy to preach about. He's worthy to pray to. And you know what else? He's worthy to write a psalm about. We hear it, see here again in Psalms 46. He is a very present help in trouble. Some have dared to say, I have turned to Jesus. I have asked God then for help, and he has failed to help me. And to my mind I say, how do we say and how do we know such a thing? How do you say that God has failed to help you in your trials? How do you say that God has failed to help you in your troubles? How is it that you can even accuse of God, accuse God of not assisting to you? How do you know that even in your trials and your tribulations, had God not been present in these situations, you would have been consumed? Don't never accuse God of being late to the scene of a trial, being late to the scene of a trouble. Could it be that the only reason that you're making it through the trials of your life is because the refuge that you have in God is on the scene? Some may say, well, he was late and he let me down through this. And that is not nothing more than the foolishness of our own hearts. Our God is a very present help in trouble. God does not keep us from them, but he keeps us while we're warring in them. Therefore, the author tells us, therefore, he is here. He is with us now. He is very present. He is never late to give aid to his children, though like Hezekiah, we are often late to seek aid from him. Hezekiah could have turned to the Lord the first time, and it could have been different sooner, but he tried to handle it himself. Many of us cannot imagine what it would feel like to have 185,000 people surrounded around where you live seeking to destroy you, seeking to do harm to you. They taunt you. But it is a testimony today of how powerful God is and how much God has survived and how God allowed his people to survive. This praise that is being brought forth. He said, tell the ladies in the choir to sing at the temple. Sing a song in the street. Sing a song to his people. Lift this praise up. When people said, Hezekiah, how bad was it? He would say it was really bad at first. When they said, how bad was it? It was something terrible. But you know what? In this situation, Hezekiah went from trying to handle things himself to asking God to handle the things. But you know the thing? He went from sorrowful defeat to wonderful praise, and the enemy never changed. But who was in support of the people did? It was the enemy never changed. It was my eyes was bad when I was not fixed on God, when I was not looking to my help. We must realize that our help cometh from the Lord. Yeah. Well, Hezekiah would say, when I've got me focused, I have nothing to fear. He goes on to say in this song, you can sing, that you can sing, let this be known. In verse 2 and 3, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be renewed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, see them. Therefore, he says in verse 2, therefore, with no turn to the refuge, this, these verses will not make sense to us. With no adjustment of the heart's focus, this cannot even possibly work in our minds. One will be forced to say, how could this really be? How could you say it? If the earth is removed, the mountains will be washed away into the sea. If the waters are roaring in trouble, if the mountains shake, how could he say, therefore will not we fear? How could he say such a thing? There will never be a therefore. Listen, there will never be a therefore in your personal life. You will never be able to say that the swellings of this wife, that the roaring troubles, that the mountain shaking, that the mountains be washed to see. You will never be able to say in your life 
that these things will not bother you unless you have a therefore. You will not ever be able to face the troubles and woes in this life unless you have a therefore. Therefore, he says, meaning, since the Lord is our refuge, therefore will not we fear. We have nothing to fear. He ends this verse, verse 3, with this word, Selah. Meaning this, meditate on that. Pause in the singing and think about what you just sang. These words that you just lifted up and praised to God. Pause and meditate that we are not going to fear the most destructive things in this life because we have a refuge in God. We have nothing to fear. One preacher said that we don't lie in our speaking. We often lie in our singing. It may do our hearts very well that as we come to the end of a, a verse in the hymn, or as we lift our hearts up and sing, that we have a seal up moment, that we meditate on the words that we lift up to God, that we meditate on the words that we just sung, that we question our hearts and say, do you realize what you just said? Do you mean what you just said? Do you realize this is the God that you serve? He was telling them, Hezekiah, as we wrote this, Selah, this song that you're going to sing, meditate on how good God is. We know our refuge. Therefore, will not, we will not fear. Verse 4 it says, There is a river that makes glad the city of God. There is a river, the streams where it shall make glad the cities of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. We've covered this before in previous sermons. This is not a physical river. This is a spiritual river of refreshment for God's people. Now, was Jerusalem the city of God? Is Cincinnati the city of God? What made Jerusalem the city of God is that it contained a place where God was worshipped. It had a place for God. The church here it is special. We're in, we're in the city of Cincinnati. Or is this building made of any different material than any other building in the neighborhood? No. It's made of the same shingles, the same brick, the same walls, the same mud, the same paint. What makes it special is what happens here. Amen. What makes it special here is that we worship God here. What makes it special is that this place we're saying belongs to God. The functions that happen here will go to exalt God. The things that we do will be putting God's first. This is God's house. This is where people come, even though our bellies may be hungry, though our backs may be hurting. We're here on Sunday because when we get here, it makes us glad to worship God. Amen. It makes us glad to hear the word of God. We know that this is the place where God meets with us. And from Calvary's cross, there has been a refreshing stream. As we hear the word of God and as we lift up our voices in singing and praising God, our hearts are refreshed. Amen. We worship the Lord from whom we receive the supply. Verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Amen. Oh, that he is. He is in the midst of the church. We shall not be moved. Now, if he is in the midst of it, how could the enemies overtake us? If he's in the midst of it, if he's in the midst of us, how could the enemy overtake the church? Again, the text is true that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall never prevail against the church. If the enemy overtake the church, then the enemy would have overtaken the one in the midst. Through the chaos may happen in this life. The church has never been lost, and it will never be lost. Buildings have been lost. Natural disasters have destroyed many buildings. But the church stands today because they have found a refuge in God, our strength. Amen. And he shall help her. Though the heathen rage, though the kingdoms were removed, remember this, as he's writing this, Sennacherib, who's now outside of the wall, Sennacherib has already taken some 
200,000 people into slavery. He sacked some 46 other countries. And while he's done all of this, while the heathens raged, while kingdoms were moved, and while other countries could not contend with them, while fear had stricken the land, the Bible says, when God spoke, when he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Oh, in the night, oh, in one night, a mighty victory came when an entire army was destroyed by the Lord of hosts. I'm telling you, when God works, when God works in our life, there is no denying it. The Lord of hosts is with us, as Hezekiah said. The, the God of Jacob, our refuge. How about it? Who is the enemy that can withstand our Lord? We know not one. Who is the enemy that can overcome the church? Who is this enemy that's in your spiritual life that's called you to fumble? Who is this enemy that has brought you to fear in your own spiritual life? Do you not see that God is our refuge and strength? Therefore, we have nothing to fear. You may be battling the giant in your own life. You may be feeling like you're losing. The answer is get to the refuge. Look at these last verses here, starting in 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He wants them to be drawn to the mighty works of the Lord. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spirit and sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. What can we say? He said, be still. Be still where? Be still in the house. Be still trusting in the Lord. The Lord is a very present help in troubles. He is our refuge and our strength. He is what helps us and strengthens us to operate in a world that we cannot understand in the worst of times, in the hardest of times, when we begin to worry about our own safety. <coughs> the only thing that we can do is the same thing Hezekiah did. We take our prayers, we take our letters, we take it before the Lord, and we lay it out and say, God, my life is in your hands. You are our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. There's no reason to fear this. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come this morning to worship, to praise you, to thank you, Lord. We pray again that you hear the prayers that we've lifted up, and we pray that you answer them. God, we thank you for all that you've done. I thank you that at times in this life, when people are so worried, we can have a peace that passes all understanding because we have a mighty refuge. <clears throat> we lift you up, Lord. We exalt you. If there be anyone here in the building, Lord, lost and on their way to hell, Oh, God, we pray that you show them their need of you. Bring them forward this morning, Lord. Let them call upon you, repenting of their sin, to place their faith in you, so they too can experience what it means to have peace. We praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hymn number 389.